City Council of the City of Lincoln City will now come to order in a work session on January 9th at 6 p.m. First item of business is calling roll. Mayor Hallis is here. Mr. Becker. Present. Mr. Doogie. Here. Mr. Milliken. Here. Mr. Kinsey. Here. Mr. Grappon. Here. Mr. Gross. Not yet. Mr. Long. Yes, sir. An idea that Mr. Gross will be here. Well, welcome everybody to our first workshop of the year. It's going to be a great year. All right, item two, discussion regarding Westover Park's request for dedicated land to be added to the park's master plan. Uh, who's leading the, the charge on this? I'll facilitate real quick and, and then turn it over to the Turskies. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, the Turskies are here representing the Westover Park HOA. Um, and they have a request. Um, Chin and I will be helping to facilitate, but it is the HOA's uh, request. I can uh, answer questions regarding the agreement we have between um, Mud 39 and the city. Chin can answer questions regarding um, the parks piece of this. Uh, but again, I'll turn it over to, to the Turskies who are representing West of the Park HOA. Thank you. I'm Diane Tursky, and this is my husband George, and we live on Marburg Saddle Lane in Westover Park Subdivision in Lake City. And we're here along with our HOA president, Brian Morrell, who is right over here. <laughs> and we are making the official request uh, to turn the donated park that the city has from our developer of our subdivision into an official city park and um, preferably included in your master parks plan that you've been working on. So we prepared a packet for each of you, and uh, the city staff was kind enough to prepare a few slides in addition. The first sheet is a survey of the uh, 16 and a half acre site, which is located off Leap City Parkway and Rainborn Lane in the Westover Park area. And this land was donated by the developer to the city of League City, and he also was uh, using it, according to um, our meeting with the city staff, uh, as a, pers a park amenity for prospective home buyers of Westover Park. It is included in the utility agreement between Mud 39 and the city of League City, and uh, we are also the Mud 39 liaison committee for Westover Park and we attend all of their meetings, too. The MUD39 board members have confirmed to us as recently as the December meeting that the park is the only use of this site that, that they will approve. The second map is a Google bird's eye view map with the park site marked on it. Uh, again, you have all this in your packet, so you can see it close up. The third map is from the League City website showing the parks and trails in the area west of I-45. And I don't have that particular slide uh, as, as a PowerPoint slide because we came, we added that a little later. Uh, but this, this particular uh, map, we attended all the public master parks plan meetings last summer and we filled out the online survey regarding parks as well. And on this particular map, we've marked the park site on the map so that you can see how it could serve the city as a west side satellite park. And that could be integrated into your master parks plan serving the west side, far west side, which is where we're at. Um, nearby subdivisions, it would easily serve, such as Rustic Oaks, Countryside, Brittany Lakes, Westwood, Newport, Magnolia Creek, as well as Westover Park. And as a city park, uh, anyone east of I-45 could enjoy the park, just as we on the west side now enjoy the park east of I-45. The um, fourth sheet, which is uh, or there, <laughs> is, a, is a graph of a poll that we conducted uh, regarding the amenities that the residents would prefer to see in the park. And the top five were the most requested amenities. Uh, they were a covered pavilion, a splash pad, playground, and hiking, biking trails, and a dog park. The, four, um, the 
the other benefits that we see of having this area used as a park uh, would be the green space benefits as an amenity which encourages families to want to live in that area and also increases property values. And the other is, uh, is flood control so that, so that you have a sponge in the area. So what we're doing is we're just basically here to request officially um, that you please direct the city staff to begin the process to designate our park site area uh, officially as a park and included in the master parks plan that you're working on. And uh, do you have any other questions? <laughs> what are all the uses the land can be used for now? If you'll allow me to just take a, a step back, um, one step back uh, as I answer that. Um, <coughs> the track was obtained um, through an agreement between MUD 39 uh, and the city. Um, the, the MUD agreement dates to 2000. The actual transfer of the land, I believe, was about 10 years ago. Um, and so the agreement between the MUD and the city is in exchange for the land, um, the developer of West Oval Park was to receive a reduction uh, in parkland dedication fees, from which were at the time $500 to $200. So a reduction of $300 per lot, multiply that out times 1,300, 1,400 lots that have built out there since, you get to somewhere between $400,000 and $500,000. So there was a monetary uh, value to the donation of this land. Um, so um, in the MUD agreement, um, the uses um, that are acceptable to both the city and the MUD, and again, this dates to 2000, uh, include a natatorium, a senior center, community center, schools, a library, fire station, parkland, ball fields, playgrounds, uh, and open space. So uh, it would appear uh, that if the council um, was favorable to the request, um, that at least uh, piece one of getting the um, space dedicated just for parkland would be go back and uh, get an official agreement ratified by MUD 39 and then ratified by the city to reduce all of these uses in this MUD agreement down to just park space. So I'm getting $390,000 that the land actually costs. Is that, you know, is that what we actually paid for the land? 1,300 times. Indi indirectly, correct. Indirectly, but yes. labor and fees is the same. And uh, it was my understanding at one time we did try to sell it or we had talked about selling it and how were we going to do that? Correct. Uh, maybe a year and a half ago, um, staff and the council were investigating a number of, of city-owned properties that surplus looking at selling them. Uh, we had this property appraised um, as if it were zoned single-family residential, which it's not, which it's not. Um, and uh, that appraisal was somewhere in the neighborhood of $850,000. Um, however, um, the agreement between the MUD and the city doesn't allow for, for single family residential, so it makes sense to, to continue any further at that time. We have an estimate on what those four or five items would cost if we were to put the building in splash pad. Jim. The only uh, We looked at several of these projects in, in the past few years. I think in for a splash pad, um, just a, a two or three years ago, we looked at it and it was, I think, believe it was about six hundred thousand dollars or so with, with the filter system. Um, as far as park projects concerned, we recently built the Girardi Family War Smart Park, which is three acres, and that costs close to a million dollars. Um, the Hometown Heroes Park, um, you know, that project was close to eleven million dollars. That was about on twenty-two acres. So, minimum, um, I would think that it was at least a couple of million dollars. That being, that being said, I, I do think, I do think uh, the west side of the city probably needs more park space. So, um, and I think the primary of the council then would definitely be a good use of space. So, uh, I'd be interested in finding out 
go in a little bit more detail to um, you know, what the cost would be and if we could phase it. And right now it's just raw land. If there was a way to phase uh, different items in the time. So. I think you probably could get a million dollars toward the development of that land. If the land has value that you can broker against you know, parks and wildlife grant programs. I don't know with the pavilion splash pad, the playground dog park, or hiking biking trails, where you could score high enough to get that money, but it's, it's possible. Staff looked at Texas Parks for all that, and communicated with them. Uh, those uh, grant applications are based on population. We would fall under um, under the 500,000 population, and the maximum that we could get matching funds for would be about $500,000. Um, and one of the things they stated was we would not be able to use the land as match if that land was dedicated or platted for park use. Uh, but I don't think it, it, it put that aside. I think if we're going to build a park, it's going to cost more than a million dollars anyway. So we'll have matching funds for a $500,000. Well, somebody, somebody donates land for the park. It's not a park before they get, before they donate it. They donate the land, and it becomes it gets platted as a park. And the value of that land usually matches up against the other amount of grant funds, which could be, unless they change that substantially, as much as a million dollars. It's not going to build the whole park, but it, it builds a good section of it. And there's a 12 percent uh, contingency in there for your planners if you hire outside planners to do it, built into it. So you know, it's a way of doing it without costing local taxpayers much money to get into the program. So, so just that I'm clear, there's nothing else we can use this land for, just so I'm clear, there's nothing else we can use this land for except for the stated purposes that you made right there. Correct, based, based on the agreement we have currently with the mud. Less the mud less. So what is our advantage? So it's already functionally dedicated to a park anyway. What is the advantage of moving this into, or, or going back to the HOA and further restricting our, our options at this time? Uh, Why wouldn't we just keep it open? Could I interrupt there? Could you uh, list the, the purposes again? Because I think it's a lot more in parks. Correct. Because I heard library in there too. Yeah, fire station, the public uses, I think, is what it's called. Parties agree that acceptable uses shall include an auditorium, a senior center, a community center, schools, a library, a fire station, parkland, ball fields, playgrounds, and open space. <coughs> so the only practical other use for part of that might be a fire station. Everybody talk to the Fire chief about that area of town. We we visited on that about two years ago. Did mm -hmm. or just for argument, I mean, to monetize it, selling it to the school district would be the other way that the city could monetize it away. Not saying I don't want to do that. I'm just, it could be the only way we could actually get something out of that asset. Yeah, they're. I know they've got plans for an elementary school within a probably a half mile from there, but that's already been dedicated to the district. Further west, yeah. Further west. Yeah. There we go. Mm -hmm. yeah. cool. um, how many parks does the subdivision have in it now? None. None. You don't so the developer them. didn't put any pocket parks or any parks at all? Any playground? There are, there are pocket parks. Well, there are little pockets. <coughs> yeah, little yeah, the swimming pool with, with a play yeah. area around it, uh, you it's, know. It's represented by the purple areas around the maroon area. Yeah, yeah there's a there are little, yeah, those Green little spaces. Yeah. There are about a lot more where they could have built a house and didn't. So those are are areas up to the north are the same purple, I guess I'm looking at? Yeah, I don't know, is that one in Westover Park? Yeah, that's That West says Westover Park. Over Park. Yes, sir. It's what's over. That's the main recreation area that has a pool. Uh, there's there's a lake and a field, like a soccer field. 
when the HOA came before the Parks Board, they had to meet two obligations. One is the park dedication uh, with the HOA parks, and one is the park fees. So their HOA dedication has been met. The park fees, I think the city got this land to get a discount on the park fees, as Paul had mentioned earlier. And normally the park fees go for what? Regional park land. Just the purchase of regional park land? Yes, sir. And if you've been to Linger Pond Park on the weekends, it's packed. So we could definitely use another park on that side of town. What's the big attraction there at Linger Pond Park? I would say the pavilion is uh, definitely an attraction there. And that being said, I mean, uh, I think, me personally, I think a park would be a good use of the space. Uh, but I'm kind of leaning towards where he, Nick's coming from, that if it's already restricted to these 10 public uses, uh, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense for us to restrict it even further. Um, I mean, I think the park is probably the best use for it, but I wouldn't want to tie our hands to something, and then two years from now, you know, that's the only place that we put a fire station or uh, some other new amount So, I mean, if, if we want to turn into the park, I'm all for it. I just don't know that we would want to restrict ourselves further. Let me ask a question. Go ahead. Well, the, the issue being uh, that where it was originally dedicated, it was dedicated for multi uh, use and stuff. However, when we went to the last two uh, MUD meetings where they started the process again, uh, we discussed this issue with them, and they said that at this point they are committed to that area being only a park. So, so they, they, we discussed it with them, brought it up, they said, at this point we, we, we agree to that only being a park. So we're in the process of trying to get it in writing, which we can do, but we were told that that process would be better handled by the city, and the city uh, talks to them, they said we wanted the park, so now this whole section of it, multi-use thing, goes away, and by the way, this says park in the multi-use section, so I don't know why we need to go through the whole process anyway, but the mud board is at this point committed to it being a park, and we can get that in writing. If I can add one thing, perhaps ask Jim a question, from the park's master plan perspective, do we, have we included it in our park inventory at this time we don't, is that correct? It wasn't dedicated. It wasn't dedicated as parkland, so we don't have it in our park inventory. So, for clarification, that it's not in, it's not included as a potential no, park use at this point in time in the parks master plan, and that's partly why the church fees are here. Yes. Sir. Yes. So, so couldn't we just accomplish this kind of administratively and just say, hey, <coughs> start considering that as a really as a potential since we already own the land, but not go through the formal steps of changing it. So we at least can you know, have some flexibility in the future, but we could just go and instruct you to consider it as a as a viable potential partner. Let me maybe one additional step, and I, I think you're on the right track. But at best, probably, what would we be looking <coughs> at out there? A fire station. You know, I guess the question is, if you carved out two acres to say for any future use, whether it was fire station, library, uh, police substation, or anything else. I mean, there wouldn't be much else you could do. The bulk of the land would be used as a park, and yet we would have done our due diligence to set aside property for any future use that we may not see at this particular time, just as an option. Well, I think that, that what Nick is saying is, is that, that if you just included it as far as a viable area that we could develop into a park, it would satisfy all of those requirements. Is, is that if, if the park department started considering that as a park or a viable option for a park, then at that point they could put it in, into their plan and allocate funds towards it. I mean, I, I, I don't think that there's a... a win-lose when you talk about just leaving it there and, and making sure that the, the parks board and the park department know that it's a viable area for a park. As long as the ownership remains with the mud district, and that's what you're talking about doing, that limits your ability to access any, any state funds for that park. You're going to have to own that park to, to get funds. Either that or the mud will have to make the application 
parts of my life, and in all the discussions I have, that, that sin, was it not, John, the most reasonable way to try to accomplish this project with Parks and Wildlife Grants? Well, clarifying here, I, I think that the city already owns it, don't they? We own it. We own, you know, we own that? Yeah. We own I thought the mud still on it. No. I don't know what, what the mud has to do with anything. Yeah, the, mud, the mud grant is to the city. Yeah, but, but it's, it's already it's been. They have to. It's a, we, right. The city's entitled. Is that correct? We're entitled? Sure. That, yeah, they granted it to us. We have an agreement. We have a mud agreement with them that restricts the uses until that agreement gets amended. So it's we not own, entitled to the city? We own, no, we own We own. the land fee simple. It was dedicated, if I recall, without restrictions other than the restrictions stated in the agreement between us and the mud. Okay. This is given to us in lieu of discounting. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. I misunderstood. We, we've we've already made <laughs> And are we able to uh, instruct Shen to as the parks master plan tonight without further restriction in case something changes in the future? I think that's probably the, the best uh, That's a dumb question. If, it, if, there's a, if there's a general consensus, we'll add it to the parks master plan. The parks master plan will come before council for ratification at some point in the future, probably in the next three or four months. I mean, it's a good spot. It ties into the trail system easily. Mm -hmm. High density population area, you could easily take a couple, two or three of those uses, plug them in at that park, and, and still do like the mayor said, and carve out a spot for fire station, fire station, yeah. library, which is something I'd like to see on the west side. That's good. I think we're in consensus. Yeah. Absolutely. I have a question. If it's not, uh, if if the use of the the, this land is not changed too far. Does that at all uh, make it possible that that it might be overlooked as part of the park's plan? Like it, it's sort of park, but it's not, or is it? That's, it is. that's what I, I don't understand. It's Currently, it's not within the park inventory. What I hear from city council is to include it in the park inventory um, in an upcoming updated master plan. Yeah. So that that wouldn't it would be looked at as as any other piece of land that's part of the the plan, master plan? Yes, sir. Okay. Sounds to me like you're in. Yeah, no, totally. Yeah. I, mean, I don't want to oversell it, but as um, uh, Councilman Kinsey mentioned, it does tie there. It's right at the end of Mongolia Creek. Mm -hmm. And all those waterways connect to Mongolia Creek. There are trails all over the place. It's a wonderful spot. Mm -hmm. Thank it, you, everyone. It ties into the trail system today. Mm -hmm. yeah. along yeah, but that was one of the first things I looked at. League City Parkway and then integration in my Matt Creek. Thank you very much. Okay, item three is presentation of the report on the follow up CIP project delivery audit. Kumar, uh, formerly of Sugar Land, started with Lee City. Sashi has probably close to 25 years of uh, experience, 15 of those in the public sector, 10 of those in the private sector, uh, master's degree from Lamar University. And, uh, we're <laughs> no, you, 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 I am, no University of Idaho, we're, on, we're glad that he's here. <laughs> anyway, we're glad that Sashi's here and getting paid his first day. So Thank you. Welcome, Paul. So when Michelle talks about CIP and some of the opportunities we have there, Sasha's up to the challenge. All right. So let's see if it's on. There we go. Okay. So to start off, the original Capital Improvement Program Project Delivery Audit Report was first issued in September of 2014. So this was one that I kind of inherited and um, tried to do some follow-up on. So the original three findings, they all kind of revolve around the project delivery manual. 
um, that they keep up to date for all the CIP projects. So the three findings, the first one was the project delivery manual does not address several important project management tasks, and they are as follows. Um, there's no lessons learned section, no past history kept on contractors, no discussion on risk analysis, no discussion on project manager performance measurements, no discussion on linking schedule, no discussion on project management thresholds. Um, then the second one was that the CIP spreadsheet was not always kept up to date. And the third one was actual time versus budgeted time and variance analysis were not always consistently documented. So moving on to kind of the, the follow-up portion of it, there, of those three findings, all three of the original action plans have been partially implemented. Um, there are some reasons for that due to the loss of key personnel mainly the director of engineering and then also the director of public works. Um, while not uh, in this audit specifically, a lot of their projects impact this. Um, and new staff since the original audited with audit was performed, a uh, few of the items for the original action plans were implemented. So in order to address some of these personnel concerns and to gain some efficiencies, the city's Department of Public Works has recently undergone a reorganization. So a few of the things they've done is the engineering department is now part of the Department of Public Works. The city engineer has replaced the director of engineering position. And so as you just met him, our city engineer started today. Um, and then an additional project manager is also expected to start in spring of 17. So in light of these occurrences, the purpose of this follow-up audit was uh, somewhat altered so we updated the management responses and action plans to satisfy the current personnel and to ensure that these improvements are achievable. So because of that, we'll need to do an additional follow-up um, in FY18 sometime to make sure that